Here she is. She's back in place. She's a very good cat, this one. She does exactly what she wants, but what she wants happens to be what I want as well, which is a good bit of decoration for the background of this video. Thank you, Rose. Much appreciated. How are we doing, though? <laughs> Welcome back to another video. A bit of a different intro, actually. Spices things up a little bit. This video is basically an update video to let you guys know everything that's going on with me, what's going on with the channel. And the first good bit of news is that I'm actually moving out hopefully very, very soon. I haven't really spoken about it until now because it's not been confirmed and it's still not completely confirmed, but it certainly looks as if it's very close to being final and confirmed. And one of the main reasons that I really can't wait to move out is because of that absolute racket that seems to keep happening next door all of the time in this house. They've decided to do a huge extension and it means that there seems to be scaffolding going up all of the time, girders being fitted. And that is not a nice backdrop for these videos. And to be honest with you, the last couple of months I've been feeling pretty stressed out with everything. When I started this channel full time, it was fantastic because I had my own space, I knew what I wanted to do, I could create anything I wanted. And over the last couple of years it's got a bit tougher because I think uh, actually making stuff that YouTube wants to promote gets harder and harder. You have to just make specific topics, specific keywords, or honestly, it just won't get shown to anyone, which is really, really frustrating. But then also from a personal perspective, it's been a bit tougher because it's obviously not their fault. I'm incredibly grateful that I can use all of their space, but sort of work changed with both of my parents because yes, I still uh, live with my parents at the moment and it means they're actually in the house a lot of the time during the week as well doing their own things doing their own work and it's just not always ideal when you're wanting to do all of this pc gaming stuff you're setting up sets you're trying to do all of these videos in silence and you have builders there you have family around and basically i think i'm old enough now where my own space would be really really nice i do miss the uni days when i could actually just i don't know crash on the sofa and it be my sofa, you know? It's weird, but I think it's definitely time. In terms of what's actually going on with the channel though, I think there's some really exciting videos coming up. I'm definitely moving towards doing more builds. I want to do one every single month. I don't know how it happened, but I seem to have only done one since last Christmas, which is not, not good. They ultimately are really fun to make. They're what you guys want to see, I think. So I'm sorry about that, but we have loads in the pipeline. We have a couple of things coming up with Be Quiet that's quite exciting. Corsair's Hydro X. Yes, I am finally going to be water cooling my PC. I said I was gonna do this about a couple of years ago, but the water cooling stuff is actually here. And I've had loads of people say, well, loads of people have had three separate people all say they're willing to come over and show me how to do it. So I think there's no excuse for that now. So that will be coming very, very shortly. And if you're like me and you haven't done it before, hopefully this should give you a bit of an in insight into how difficult it is. Hopefully not very, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. But then also in terms of other themed builds, we're gonna have budget builds, we're gonna have high-end 4K gaming ultra-wide. Um, builds. We've got new Ryzen CPUs, of course. That's one of the big things. I think I'm going to be making the switch from an Intel 10 core to an AMD 16 core, which is really, really exciting. There's also quite a few monitors coming out that I think are going to be pretty fascinating. We've got the PG35VQ, which is, of course, the 200 hertz local dimming HDR monitor from ASUS and some of the other competitors. There's going to be an AOC one, which hopefully is going to be pretty similar, but that little bit cheaper. Undercut ROG on pricing. That would definitely be something that a lot of people would like to see. But also I got an email this morning from LG saying that they've got two new monitors that they think I'm going to be interested in. One of which I've been waiting for for a very, very long time. This is the 38 inch equivalent of the one behind me. So what is it? It's 3840 by 1600 resolution up to something crazy like 160, 170 hertz refresh rate, something like that. And obviously it's all geared towards gaming. But then also there is a one millisecond IPS monitor that is 1440p, 144Hz from LG. And they say this one is gonna be sent out in the next few weeks, maybe a month's time. And this will be really interested. Um, this will be really interested. This will be really interesting because obviously with TN panels, they're typically the best for gaming because they're so fast with one millisecond response times. But if we genuinely can get that from an IPS equipped monitor, then you're gonna get the benefit of color accuracy as well as the speed that you'd normally associate with TN. 
I am a little bit reluctant because I have a feeling this could be one of those things where it is just marketing, but I guess we will just have to wait and see. You guys also got in touch with some questions. Oh my God, is that really the case? I asked for the Q&A six months ago and I'm only answering them now. This is shocking. What do you think about the FPS drops with ray tracing? And I think this question is more relevant than ever because if you've been following E3, you'll know that the new Xbox actually supports ray tracing and there's been a whole host of new games announced that support the tech. Let's start with Call of Duty. I think this is one that I'd probably leave it off unless I had plenty of FPS to spare because it's very similar to Battlefield. I think it will look good and I think it could make quite a visual difference but I would personally rather just be a little bit more competitive, even in single player to be honest. I'd just rather the game felt as good as possible, rather than say playing at 45, 50 frames a second. Even if it supports DLSS, I'd still rather have ray tracing off and maximize all of my frames per second. But then in Cyberpunk and the new Watch Dogs that's set in London, this could be games where I think I would actually leave ray tracing on. Cyberpunk I'm slightly reluctant about because I think it's going to be really high end and it's going to require a lot of specs anyway. But Watch Dogs, I can see myself playing that game with a controller, sitting down, maybe playing on a TV with ray tracing on and sort of taking in the way London looks. I think that's probably going to be one of the best applications for ray tracing, so I guess we will just have to sort of wait and watch that space. Criss Cross says, what's the most expensive build or tech you have ever reviewed? And I can answer this one very clearly. It is the Acer Predator 21X that arrived a few years ago now in a flight case. I think the actual value of it was around about £8,000. So sure enough, when the delivery man came to recollect that when I had to send that back, I was absolutely petrified. I'm like, oh my God, imagine if this gets lost. It's my fault. I don't have any money. I'm going to have to pay for this. Sweating. Fortunately it did turn up and the lovely Karen from Acer was very grateful I think that it did. Connor Kelvey says, is a gaming mouse worth it? Yes, absolutely. I would be a little bit cautious about some of the marketing from maybe some of the lesser known companies where they say it's a gaming mouse. Pretty much you're going to want to check reviews, you're going to want to see what sensors inside, whether it has all of the buttons that you want, whether it actually supports the grip that you like, whether it's made out of the right materials. If you're looking for something a little bit cheaper, then Red Dragon actually makes some really nice stuff at sort of quite budget friendly prices. But as you start to look a little bit further up and you get a bit more high end, that's when you're going to get more specific mice for specific people. So it's always worth having a play around with a few different ones. Maybe go into a computer shop if you can and actually try them out. Because I've used, I don't know, probably about 30, 50 mouse mice in the last um, couple of years. and. A lot of them I really like, but a lot of them I really don't. And I think just by ordering one online, you don't always get the full picture on whether it's actually going to suit you. I'm actually really struggling with this next one. It's from King XF, and it says, what's your favorite product you've ever reviewed and why? And it's really difficult because there have been so many different things that I've really liked over the last few years. I would say that I'm very much a monitor guy. So I remember my first ultra wide monitor that I tested blew my mind how much difference that made. Quite recently, G-Sync Ultimate, that makes a huge amount of difference, not just for the G-Sync model, but the HDR. I think we're a few years away from having a thousand nit HDR in pretty much all monitors. And obviously it's just a little bit too expensive really at the moment to really justify, but that's a really exciting bit of tech. I've been wearing this watch here, my G-Watch R for coming up five years and it's still going now. So I think that's gotta have a little bit of kudos, I guess, in the whole review game. But the best single thing are these things, these speakers behind me. I've been using them probably again for around about four or five years now. They're from Bowers and Wilkins. They are the 685S2s. I purchased these for around about 450 pounds and they were never really meant to be used on my desk. They were for my living room at uni. And honestly, they sound amazing. And the thing is with speakers, they last in theory for a lifetime. So if you get the best ones you can when you can afford it from a younger age, I guess, they're gonna look after you for years and years to come. And the thing that I like about it so much is that every single time you discover a new song, maybe on the radio in the car or something, and then I come back and I put it on through these things, it's just, it makes me rediscover that track and just rediscover my love of music. I haven't really talked about this too much because to be honest, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to music. I don't know the right words, the right phrases, 
But I really do like listening to a lot of music, and a good set of speakers, I'm telling you, makes the world of difference. What's your opinion on the upcoming Ryzen Generation 3? Well, really, really excited, actually. I, I'm really interested to see what Intel are going to do, but my plan at the moment, as I think I mentioned at the start of this video, is very much to upgrade this PC with a 16-core CPU and then use that for 4K video editing, and hopefully I can overclock it and run it on water so that we're not losing out on gaming performance. But all of this stuff is pure speculation. I can't really comment on that, obviously, until I've actually got it in for testing. The only thing that does concern me a little bit is that all of the chipsets pretty much will use a fan bar one or two motherboards. And I like to point out that this is probably not going to be a problem whatsoever. I did a video on this and a lot of people were... I'm not sure if upset's the right word, but they weren't really that happy that I was bringing this up. But I think it's my job to actually report this stuff. I'm very much looking forward to AMD products. I'm looking forward to using them and I'm planning them for my personal rig. So please don't take that to be, oh, he's just saying this because he loves Intel or anything like that. I've seen all sorts of comments on that video. I'm just, I didn't realize that there was going to be a fan on this motherboard. So when I saw there was, I made a video that mentioned that there's going to be fans on the motherboards. That's all there is to it. Nothing more, nothing less. If you're happy to have a fan on your motherboard, like I think everyone in the comment section was, then fantastic. That's all, honestly, that's all it was meant to be. It was just a bit different for me because it's not really something I'm used to seeing. And then I think our final lot of questions were, when will you do the Q&A? Six months late, apparently. And are you a full-time YouTuber? Yes, I am. I have been for the last couple of years now. It does stress me out a bit. I think, if I'm completely honest with you, I do suffer a bit from anxiety now. There's just so much sort of going on with everything. And obviously this is quite a public channel now and it's got quite big to the size where I do spend a lot of my life worrying about stuff. It's not something that I want to do. It's something I would really love to not do, but I'm finding it quite difficult sometimes to really cope. Um, this has got deep very, very quickly, hasn't it? I do, I do find it quite difficult to cope with sometimes, but fortunately I have people around me that have some experience, I guess, and help me. And I know there are other YouTubers um, that suffer from similar things. So we sort of gel together and talk about it because at the real core of it, I, I love making these videos. I really do. And I would love to do it for as long as I possibly can do while obviously keeping the lights on and all of the other stuff that is required, I guess, for living life. But yes, this has been this q and um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I suddenly feel a bit different to how I did when I started the video, so I'm sorry, everyone. Apologize, I, I, I went there. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. It helps out so, so much you wouldn't believe. Get subscribed if you're not already, but I'd like to think if you're watching a Q&A video, you are, but each to their own anyway. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.